Hello, my lovelies. Welcome back to my channel, Red Elevator. I'm Nina Takish. This is the Red Elevator. This is the elevator I come out of to share with you guys my interior design knowledge and passion. Today, we're going to be talking about the biggest transformation in home design and something that has been completely and utterly eliminated. You're not going to believe it. Follow me. <laughs> Welcome back, everyone. I'm so glad I was away in Europe for what was the better part of three weeks, and I had the absolute best time. I can't even tell you it was a trip of a lifetime. If you guys want to know exactly what I did on this trip, what beautiful places we visited, I recommend that you subscribe to my TikTok. We will list it here on the screen so that you guys can definitely follow because there's a lot of interesting content on TikTok that we're going to be doing a big push for. So make sure and follow. You're never going to believe this, but guess what we are eliminating in our new construction and if we can in old remodels or new remodels. We are getting rid of recessed lighting. That's right. Recessed lighting is a thing of the past. We don't want to see it. We don't want to do it. And it's gone. So first of all, I want to thank everyone for chiming in on these chairs. The majority of you, since we took kind of a poll, wanted me to keep this fabric. And I do agree with that. I definitely want to keep this fabric. But somebody came up with a really good idea. And she said, you know, I like the fabric. I don't love it. So why don't you keep it for a while, use it, enjoy it, and then reupholster it. And I think that is exactly what I'm gonna do because I do love them. And if they grow on me crazy, then I'll keep them forever. But I'm just gonna use them the way they are. Maybe after a few dinner parties and some red wine. So what is recessed lining, you may ask? I'm sure most of you know, but I will explain that recessed lining is nothing other than a flush light that gets inserted in a hollow, sort of opening on your ceiling. So it's basically a flat ceiling mount fixture. And it's basically within, instead of me trying to explain it, why don't we just look at this photo? I even have them up here in my living room. As you can see, everyone puts them in construction. They used to be the thing. It's like, do you have recessed lighting? Ooh. But now we're saying, if you have recessed lighting, get rid of it, it's awful. And I'll explain why. Why do I hate recessed lighting? Well, I'll tell you why I hate it. First of all, it's down lighting. And down lighting casts a terrible shadow on your face. So when people come over, they don't look their best, but that's not really why we're doing it. It's a very uncomfortable light, which basically interferes with your face. It interferes with your vision and you are unable really to have the house look as good as it could. Ambient lighting, on the other hand, is what we're really looking for. And with ambient lighting, there is so much that you can do. And I'm going to show you those examples. As you can see from this dining room, there are no recessed lights. You could see the ceiling of this dining room. This is a very high end home. They didn't forget to put in their recessed lights. They chose not to put in their recessed lights. You will note more and more homes are opting out of the recessed lights altogether. And they are putting in what is gorgeous lighting fixtures. Lighting fixtures today are fantastic. I love putting them in. We are doing a flip project right now, which is another reason why you need to follow me on TikTok and Instagram, especially in my stories, because I am sharing day to day, basically, especially now that we're in the finishing process, how we are remodeling and transforming this house. Again, in this bedroom, you see these beautiful beams in this room, but you're not seeing any recessed lights, are we? No, no need. Why? Because we have the nightstand pendant lights that are in there, and there's a lot of beautiful natural light that's coming in. There are other sources of light in this room, but they certainly are not recessed. So what people are opting to do instead is bringing in a lot of attention to their ceilings because they can now, because there's no interference of recessed lights. Back in the day when recessed lights were the norm, it limited you as to what you can do on your ceilings. Now you have complete freedom. So you have freedom. I feel like the slavery of recess lights is now we're free of it. And I am so excited about the fact that you have complete artistic freedom on your ceilings. And look at this gorgeous dining room. I mean, literally these ceilings could not have been done properly if they had those annoying recessed lights. What I wanted to show you obviously is that it doesn't have recessed lights, but 
In unison, I wanted you guys to pay attention to the fact that this bathroom, powder room, I should say, has one pendant light. Why is that sufficient? Well, powder rooms are not really a place where you're doing makeup or cooking or cutting or anything of that sort. At least I hope you're not. So what you want to do is you want to be able to create a mood. The mood is created with this gorgeous single pendant that is asymmetrically placed in on the side. But again, the mirrors in this room are going to allow the pendant light to reflect. So that will actually increase your light in this powder room. It'll be completely sufficient. And may I add that you must always, 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 and I mean always add dimmers on every single light anywhere in your home because you want to have control. And as a Virgo, I'm telling you, you want control. My next favorite no recess light situation, we're going to call it, is this incredible living room. If I could recreate that living room in my home, I would do it tomorrow. It's so amazing. And why is it amazing? There's a lot of reasons why it's amazing, but one of them is the use of their LED lights that doesn't look cheesy. Now, remember, you can go a little crazy with the LED and create Vegas, which we don't want to do. It has to be done methodically. It has to be done purposely. You can't just put it everywhere because Nina said, LED lights are the thing. No. In order to create this floating like ceiling, the way that the architect designed this was to basically have these LED recessed lights and not recessed, recessed, the other recessed LED lights that are in the periphery, the circumference of this floating ceiling. And then there's another really interesting part, which is there's a peekaboo fireplace, which I love. And this peekaboo has, again, lighting that comes from within. How designers are tackling the lighting situation in places where you're going to need perhaps more lighting. There are some areas of the house that you might want more lighting. Or in this case, this particular person wanted to have not just their gorgeous serre pendant light, I would call it, in their dining room, but they also wanted to have some ambient task or art light. And the way that this is done is that they are placing flush mounted art lights and task lights on the ceiling. I love this. We just did this for a client in New York. We put art light everywhere. And basically when people come into the house, they notice the beauty of the art versus everything is lit as if you're in a department store. This would be the best analogy or way for me to explain to you that you can use different fixtures in order to be able to illuminate not only art lights, but areas that you might need more. Light. This next project is really beautiful. It was published in Architectural Digest Mexico, shot by the same photographer that I used in New York, uh, Marco Rica, who is so talented. And the design was by the firm of Sissy and Marley. And I just love this hallway. I really wanted to talk to you guys about it. And the reason I love this hallway is that it has, once again, no use of recessed lights. Notice this is an AD architectural digest worthy hallway. They're not putting in recessed lights. Instead, they are putting a plethora in line in symmetry, pendant lights that are so chic, they're probably an old age brass fixture that is running along the corridor. No longer do we have to have the recessed lights. Instead, we can create art. Artfully, we can create lighting. Let me show you this other house that doesn't have recessed lighting. If you're not convinced, if you're still not convinced about recessed lighting, look at this house. Gorgeous. It's got this beautiful architectural pendant light that's multi light. Again, if you have a multi light pendant, you're really on track to getting enough lighting that you're going to need in your space that's ambient, that's warm. Speaking of which, we must adhere to the warm lighting rule. You want to do a warm light. We talked about that in our last episode. 2800 lumens is probably my favorite. It's a warm white and it'll create exactly the look that you want. As a result, in conclusion, I would like to say that when we are designing a home or when you're redesigning your space or when you are thinking about lighting, and you have the ability to do a little bit of construction, think of placing pointers, meaning little uh, light pictures, pendant lights that are beautiful and architectural. These will be under the category of flush mounts. So if you're on any website that has lighting, look up flush mounts 
And of course, you'll see bigger flush mounts, but you'll also see tiny little flush mounts and use those symmetrically or asymmetrically to do to make a statement. You could put three of them above an island. We're doing that in our flip home. You could put three or four of them, for instance, in a grouping over a beautiful statue. You can certainly point them towards your art light. And one other very important thing I wanted to mention about lighting is that track lighting is your friend. It's no longer out. It used to be outdated, but I think it's one of the best methods of being able to change your furniture position and be able to add lights into track lighting. So as you would in a closet, you can add more lights into it. They used to be what are called MR16s, which were the old halogen lights, but now we've got LED MR16s, if that makes sense, and you just pop them into your track lights. You can pop different fixtures into the track light. So, you know, in old buildings, I'm going off on a little tangent because I think this is important. In old buildings where you cannot pierce the ceiling, people used to put track lights, but and in Europe, they put a lot of track lighting because they can't just, you know, break into an 18th century building. So track lighting is your friend. It is seamless. It works beautifully in a home when you're able to illuminate the items that you want to stand out. So if you want something to stand out, like these beautiful legs on my coffee table, I'm gonna want a light that's directly flashes on this, that directly illuminates it. So I hope this information was helpful. Let me know. I did a little bit more of a dive in this episode. I wanted to really go into the details of why it's important not to do recessed lighting. And so I went on a very long tangent. I think my videographer's arm is now numb. I am wearing today H&M. I love this. This is a copy of the very expensive kite dress. And why not? We love mixing high with mix low. This chair is high and this is low. And I mean real low. So if you want this dress, we're going to link it in the description section from H&M. It also comes in black. I'm sad that I don't have the black. I might have to buy the black, but this is the steel gray. And I can't wait to see you guys again next week. Don't forget to subscribe. Give this video a thumbs up. If you don't give it a thumbs up, people might not see it. And that would be very sad. I love you guys. Thank you so much. And we'll see you again next Sunday.